Welcome to this IFRS Foundation podcast, which will focus on the October meeting of the International Accounting Standards Board. The meeting took place in London on the 24th and 25th of October 2018. My name is Matt Tilling and I'm a member of the technical staff here at the ISB. Today I am joined by the Chair of the Board, Hans Hugewurst, and Vice Chair Sue Lloyd to talk through the latest meeting and other developments. Hans, I think we should just jump straight into the board meeting and there was a lot of discussion about IFRS 17 insurance this week. Could you take us through the discussion? Yes, indeed we uh, talked at length uh, about uh, IFRS 17 and its uh, implementation. As most people are aware, we have done a lot to support implementation of the standards. Uh, We have issued a lot of educational material. And of course, we have uh, had a couple of sessions with the Transition Resource uh, Group. And uh, during uh, this whole process, we have received a lot of uh, feedback uh, from stakeholders uh, since the standard was issued in uh, May 2017. And what we we have always said that, you know, as we receive feedback about implementation challenges, that we would take a look at a certain point. Uh, whether there is anything that we uh, would need to do to facilitate uh, further implementation. Uh, So uh, we have now reached the point we are considering whether to respond to the uh, feedback received. Uh, What we had a preliminary discussion of a list of 25 or 26 issues that have been raised by uh, mainly by the industry itself and also concerns raised by uh, investors. So there are a lot of suggestions for improvement of the standards. Clearly, uh, there's no way that we uh, would be able to take up all uh, these uh, 25 uh, issues. Uh, And we have decided in this board meeting that if we are going to do something, it has to pass a couple of uh, very strict criteria. First of all, if there is going to be any change, it should definitely not result in less useful information to investors, so it should not lead to the deterioration of the standard. Also, uh, it should not disrupt existing implementation uh, processes. Uh, Obviously, if we are going to go into wholesale changes of the standard that would enormously disrupt uh, the implementation efforts of uh, a lot of companies that are already well underway. And also we want to uh, avoid risking undue delays in the uh, effective uh, uh, date of the, uh, of the standard. So all these uh, will mean in practice that we have not decided anything yet about possible change. But if we were going to go there, it it will essentially be fine-tuning the standard rather than making uh, fundamental changes uh, to the standard. Uh, and that is something that I cannot really stress uh, enough. There will be uh, more IFR 17 discussions in the coming months. We are aware that a, a lot of people in the industry think that we have so, sort of decided that there's going to be a two-year uh, delay of the standard. Uh, I do want to stress here that nothing has been decided and that uh, I, I said in a meeting that, you know, it's really with a very heavy heart that we discussed all these issues because I just feel that there's a lack of a sense of urgency in the market uh, about the uh, necessity of this uh, standard. I said that the, uh, the International Monetary Fund in its uh, Global Financial Stability Report uh, last year Uh, clearly indicated that that there are concerns about the quality of accounting in the insurance uh, industry, especially uh, given the fact that uh, the low interest rate environment makes the industry uh, rather uh, vulnerable. It increases the insurance liability. It leads to a search for yield. Compared to the past, um, the insurance industry is investing a lot more uh, in uh, bonds that have a lower quality than that, that they used to do in the in, in the past and what I would really like is that this standard is effective in case we are going to be confronted with another financial crisis and that could even happen before 2021 uh, let alone that uh, we would feel comfortable just postponing the standard by two years if there is going to be any delay I want to keep it as minimal as possible because it is of the utmost importance uh, that the investor gets a proper look at both performance and uh, balance sheet of uh, of insurance uh, companies, uh, especially in a time of uh, crisis that is of uh, the utmost importance. 
And we'll continue to watch this space and see what the board uh, has to say over the coming months. Turning now to primary financial statements, Sue, the board continues to look at subtotals. That's right. So um, as people have listened to the podcast before will know we've been working on this project and one of the things we've been doing is agreeing on some new subtotals to be included in the income statement. And so we continued having a, a discussion about that this month. And we were really enhancing our previous decisions and looking at the very specific wording we might use around the subtotals in this project. And I think the most important, perhaps, decision that we made was agreeing to call the first subtotal that we're now planning to um, mandate an operating profit subtotal in the way that we describe it. We also had a more general discussion on the use of, of labels for subtotals and emphasised the importance of um, ensuring that labels that are used faithfully represent the measure that they are describing. And we decided to include a specific illustration of that in what we um, go on to propose uh, for comment, which is to say that when you have an EBIT label, that that can only be used to describe a measure that has been calculated as profit or loss, excluding all aspects of interest income and expense and income tax, income and expense, as a specific example of faithful representation in a label. Well, let's move from EBIT to something completely different, materiality. The board discussed guidance and examples intended to help companies apply the four-step materiality process in the practice statement on making materiality judgments when determining which accounting policies to disclose. That's right, and this is building on something we've discussed in the past that was included in our Principles of Disclosure discussion paper, which was some proposals for giving guidance on which accounting policy should be included in the notes to the financial statements because this is an area where people tell us that there tends to be pages and pages and pages of stuff um, that's not necessarily very entity specific. So what we discussed at this month's board meeting was a proposal to apply the concept of materiality in choosing which uh, accounting policies should be disclosed Um, and in particular as you mentioned in the intro, looking at whether we should include this as an example of the application of materiality and include it in the materiality practice statement. We had a quite long and protracted discussion on this. I think we Hans got a bit frustrated with us at one point. And we thought that we actually needed to do a little bit more thinking on exactly what this sort of concept of materiality means for a an accounting policy. And so the staff are going to do some more analysis and actually bring it back and we'll discuss it further at a, at a later board meeting. Hans, the board continued its discussions on the Goodwill and Impairment Research Project. Yes, so in a um, previous uh, board meeting we have decided that we are going to issue a discussion paper uh, on uh, the issue of goodwill and impairment, subsequent accounting for uh, uh, goodwill. We had a discussion on uh, exactly uh, which topics uh, we want to address in that uh, discussion paper and we have asked the uh, staff to start writing as quickly as possible uh, and if then in writing they feel the need to explore uh, some issues in more detail and to go out to to our constituents to uh, ask for uh, views then they can do that but we believe it's uh, the best way forward is to simply uh, start writing and, and, and take it from there. Goodwill of course arises in a business combination and that neatly segues into another piece of news from the board. We have released an updated definition of a business. Yes, so we issued uh, some uh, narrow scope amendments to IFRS 3 business combinations to improve the definition of a business and the amendments will help companies determining in determining whether an acquisition made is of a business or a group of assets and uh, the amendments contain uh, guidance and, 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 and an optional quantitative test to assist in making this assessment. So, no dynamic risk management for us to discuss this month? Sadly. No, but there (laughs) is an issue around income tax arising from the IFRS Interpretations Committee that came to the board. Yes, that's right. So the board discussed the Interpretation Committee's recommendation to us, which was to propose a narrow scope amendment to IES 12, the income tax standard. Interestingly to me, uh, this question came in in the context of people applying IFRS 16, the new leases standard. Um, and it relates to what you do about the recognition of deferred tax when a company accounts for transactions like leases or decommissioning obligations, um, where there's recognition of both an asset and a liability. 
and the board agreed uh, with the interpretation committee's recommendation and so we're going to go forward and propose an amendment to IAS 12 which would narrow the existing initial recognition exemption that we have in the standard for um, the recognition of deferred tax. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that brings us to the end of the October podcast. It's quite a short break now until the next board meeting, which is in really early November. So not so long to wait for the next podcast. Thank you, Hans and Sue, and thank you to our listeners. Any feedback on these podcasts, please email communications at ifrs.org. The full summary of the board's discussion and the decisions at the October meeting can be found in the ISB update on the IFRS Foundation's website.